Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining us for our Health Links webinar series. As many of you know, Health Links is a signature program of the Center for Work, Health and Environment, sorry, Health, Work and Environment at the Colorado School of Public Health. Our mission is to work with employers to create healthier and safer workplaces. My name is Alexis Terrell. I'm filling in for Kaylee Rivera today. I'm the Continuing Education Manager for the Center for Health, Work, and Environment. And I'm here because we all love bringing educational content to our network. So today, um, our presentation, it is part of the HealthLink series, and all of these webinars are related or designed to relate back to our benchmarks within the HealthLink standard uh, to provide you and your teams with resources to help you create a supportive environment for your employees. Today's webinar is intended to provide you with an overview of how your workplace can create accommodations for lactating mothers. And we hope that through this webinar, you take away some strategies and ideas for your workplace health promotion programs. And before I introduce the speakers today, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. So all of you are currently on mute and will be kept on mute throughout the presentation. So you don't have to worry if you've got little ones crying in the back or, or lunch happening behind you or if you're eating lunch, um, we can't hear you. But if you do have a question, please use the chat box that is in the control panel of your screen. I'll be monitoring that. So if you have any questions, feel free to um, type in your questions as soon as you think about it. Don't wait till the end because you might forget. And I will be watching for questions coming in and make sure uh, I will make sure our panelists know when you do have a question. Um, also, this webinar is being recorded, so after the webinar is over, we'll share the link uh, to the recording along with a copy of the slides that you see here today and some other additional resources that our panelists have to share with you. And you'll also receive an email with links to an evaluation where you can provide feedback for us. We really do appreciate your feedback. It helps us to create better programs moving forward. And for lastly, for anyone who wants to claim SHRM credits, we do have that available as well. And a link to do so will be included in our follow-up email. So, getting started. I'd like to now introduce our wonderful presenters, uh, Caitlin Chapman and Christy Marie Jackson. So, Christy Marie is the Public Health Program Coordinator at Denver Public Health. She serves as the um, Program Coordinator on the Chronic Disease Team at Denver Public Health. And in this role, she supports communities and public venues throughout the Denver, Denver metro area to adopt model policies and best practices to improve opportunities for healthy eating and active living. Christy Marie has over seven years of experience working with youth and previously coordinated the youth activities at Denver Public Health and the Denver Department of Public Health and Environment. Prior to joining Denver Public Health, Christy Marie worked at Children's Hospital Colorado where she managed the implementation of a clinical study on reducing youth access to firearms. She serves on several committees to address social injustices and inequities in communities around the region. Christy Marie completed a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology at Colorado College and a Master of Public Health at the Colorado School of Public Health, focusing on community health education. We are very fortunate to have her with us today. And also with us is Caitlin Chapman, who works as the breastfeeding policy specialist for Tri-County Health Department. Tri-County is the largest local health department in Colorado, serving 1.5 million people in three counties. Caitlin is passionate about improving health by expanding access to family-friendly policies and breastfeeding-friendly environments. Her work focuses on supporting child care centers, medical offices, and communities in adopting breastfeeding-friendly practices. 
Previously, Caitlin coordinated community-based immunization clinics and conducted medical provider and community education to promote HPV vaccination as a population-based cancer prevention strategy. Caitlin earned a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Food Science at the University of Vermont and a Bachelor of Science in Nursing at the University of Connecticut. She is currently working towards a Master of Public Health degree at the Colorado School of Public Health. So with that, I am going to um, let them take it from here and um, we'll get started with our presentation. Sorry about that. I think we've still got them muted. We should be able to hear you now. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Hello, um, all, and welcome uh, to the HealthLinks Workplace Lactation Accommodation Webinar. I am Christy Marie Jackson. And I'm Caitlin Chapman. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. For a little background on our presentation, uh, Christy Marie and I are funded through the Colorado State Health Department through their Cancer, Cardiovascular, and Chronic Pulmonary Disease Grants Program. We are currently working collaboratively with Jefferson and Boulder counties to support the Denver metro area in adopting breastfeeding friendly policies and practices. Our grant also provides support in rural areas of the state. We'll share more details about funding and support available here in Colorado later in our presentation. But for the purposes of this webinar, uh, we will mainly be focusing more broadly on breastfeeding friendly practices that can be applied in any workplace, regardless of the location or sector. So I want to begin by acknowledging and giving credit to the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, as well as Boulder County Public Health for many of the graphics and photos that you will see in today's presentation. For a quick overview on what we plan on talking about during today, today's webinar, we will be sharing some breastfeeding information and data, discussing lactation laws, both federal and state, talking about the benefits of accommodating breastfeeding, sharing some steps on how to accommodate breastfeeding and end with some valuable resources. Our objectives um, by the end of this webinar are that participants will be able to describe the health benefits associated with breastfeeding, explain the how and why em employers should accommodate breastfeeding, and identify resources for improving breastfeeding practices and policies. So I wanted to start uh, today by acknowledging that it is important to know that any breast milk is good. Babies get immediate benefits from receiving any amount of breast milk. To receive the full extent of the health benefits, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that babies should breastfeed for at least six months. Breastfeeding provides several benefits for both mom and baby, and the, and the longer that it occurs, the that the more benefits that are received. For babies, breastfeeding has been shown um, in research to reduce the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS, by over 50%. Additionally, breastfeeding reduces the risk of respiratory tract and ear infections, diarrhea, and other stomach problems. Many factors within breast milk actually help prevent illness and can help babies to recover from illness faster. As for moms, breastfeeding can reduce um, breast, some breast and ovarian cancer, heart disease, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and brittle bone. Overall, breastfeeding can provide several protective factors for both, for both baby and mom. So breastfeeding not only benefits moms and babies, but it can also benefit you as an employer and the community and the environment that we all live in. Breastfeeding continues to benefit, benefit babies beyond the acute and chronic conditions. It also is a natural occurring food uh, for babies and provides important nutrients to help, baby, to help babies be healthier. Breast, breast milk is also easily digested and babies uh, can get less fussy. Breast milk helps development and learning ability. And for moms, breastfeeding can lower the risk of blood loss after delivery, also may help moms lose weight, 
can save money and the cost associated with purchasing formula. So you can save between, it's estimated that you can save between um, $800 and $1,200 a year uh, when you're not purchasing formula. So there's a lot of cost uh, benefits associated with it. Breastfeeding saves time because breastfeeding can occur anywhere and there is no prep needed. As for workplaces, providing a support, a support for nursing families at work is good for business. Lactation accommodations at work can produce a three to one return on investment due to um, having lower healthcare costs, reduced rates of absenteeism, lower turnover rates, improved employee production and loyalty, and a family-friendly image. And being a breastfeeding-friendly employer is a, there is a strategic way to attract, retain, and engage mothers uh, with infants. And finally, breastfeeding can also support the community and environment because it lowers healthcare costs, and potentially for both mom and baby, um, that can be less sick, often therefore less, miss less work. It also saves lives and money. Uh, research estimates that in the U.S. alone, it's uh, 90, it's 90% 90 of babies were breastfed for at least six months exclusively. It could prevent a thousand deaths each, each year and also could, uh, per, per, could also save $18 billion um, in costs, in healthcare costs, as well as um, less waste. So breast milk is also a sustainable resource. Um, so fewer cans and bottles and waste, um, in waste and landfills, breastfeeding also requires no packaging, processing, or production that harms the environment. So in Colorado, moms really want and choose to breastfeed. With over 90% of moms initiating breastfeeding um, in, in Colorado, it is important to provide adequate breastfeeding support to our moms and families. These trends that you see in this graphic are very similar to those seen across the U.S. Uh, U.S. stats uh, from 2018 show that 83.2% of moms ever breastfeed, 24.9% exclusive bre breastfeed exclusively at six months, and 35.9% breastfeed for at least a year. As you can see, breastfeeding initiation starts off really strong nationally and for the state of Colorado, but as you but as you move uh, to breastfeeding exclusively for six months, you start to see um, a drastic decline within um, the six months, as well as in the 40% ranges for exclusivity into a year. These large drops in breastfeeding rates are often attributed to the challenges and barriers parents might face when returning back to work or not having an environment that continues to support breastfeeding. Families having a supportive workplace, community, and environment can help increase these numbers and help parents feel encouraged to meet their breastfeeding goals. So even though research shows that moms want to breastfeed there, um, and, are initiate, and actually are initiating breastfeeding, there are several barriers that can prevent moms from continuing to breastfeed or, reach their, or reaching their breastfeeding goals. Some barriers that moms may experience are social norms, so uh, normalizing breastfeeding to make uh, moms feel more welcome to breastfeed um, can help moms feel more supported. Lack of knowledge, so families and moms uh, may be lacking access to breastfeeding resources and education. Lack of support, uh, families and moms may be, be receiving messaging um, at home or in the in environment about breastfeeding or not having a supportive environment. Uh, maternity leave, moms may not have the time uh, to prolong uh, breastfeeding or meet breastfeeding goals due to having to return back to work. Uh, healthcare practices, breastfeeding initiation may not be happening after delivery um, or formula might be promoted over breastfeeding. Uh, formula marketing, formula companies um, often target families and moms as the easy and convenient option for feeding babies. Work in school, so not having a supportive, flexible environment at work or school can also hinder breastfeeding. So just as there are barriers to breastfeeding, there are also disparities and inequities that can deter moms from breastfeeding. Ethical racial minorities may experience disproportionate, disproportionate breastfeeding rates. Among racial and ethnic populations, African Americans typically have the lowest breastfeeding rates. Low-income and hourly wage workers also have reduced initiation. 
duration, and, exclus and exclusivity, possibly due to the lack of breastfeeding accommodation and flexibility that they have. Women in the workforce with small children is growing. According to a 2018 labor statistics, according to the 2018 labor and statistics, 65.1% of women in the workforce have children under the age of six. And 74.5 of women with children under the age of six actually work full time. So returning to work can negatively impact breastfeeding initiation and duration. So why accommodate? Well, for all the reasons that I mentioned in the previous slides, and also to comply with state and federal laws, which I will talk about shortly, to increase employee satisfaction and retention, so employees of companies with lactation support feel more productive and loyal to their companies, employees work later into pregnancy, return to work sooner, and are more likely to, re to return to work after maternity leave. Also, accommodating provides financial benefits for your organization. So breastfeeding, so breastfed babies are healthier, less ill, which means parents um, um, are less likely to miss work. Um, absenteeism rates are lower for both male and female employees. When female partners breastfeed, uh, there's lower health care costs. It is estimated that $13 billion a year could be saved in health care costs if 90% of mothers breastfed exclusively. And how about the cost of replacing employees? Companies often have to spend a lot of money on separation, replacement, and training for new employees. There is also valuable loss of experience and knowledge with um, parents leaving organizations because of lack of breastfeeding support. Accommodating breastfeeding overall can improve the health of your employees, their families, and, and Colorado communities. So here we have a quote from Metro Caring. Metro Caring is a local Denver food pantry and they share why accommodating breastfeeding is important to their organization and employees. They state that a designated lactation space when combined with full support of breastfeeding anytime, anywhere, sends a message to our community about what we value. The picture to the left shows a room at Metro Caring that is currently under construction to be repurposed into a breastfeeding space, not only for employees, but also for the families that visit the food, the food pantry. Don't worry, this is a before picture. <laughs> the room is expected to be completed by the spring of 2019. So as I mentioned previously, it's important to accommodate breastfeeding because it is the law. There are laws put into place to protect breastfeeding families. Here are two laws. One is in the state of Colorado, the other is the federal law. Both laws require that employers do at least three things, that they provide a reasonable break time, paid or unpaid, provide a private space that is not a bathroom, and that employees cannot discriminate against breastfeeding families. However, where the, where the laws actually do defer is on um, the, amount of employee, the amount of employees and how long employees are protected under these laws. In the state of Colorado, an employer must cover these three things if they have one or more employees. While the federal law states that it's greater that the, empl the employer has to protect um, if they have equal equal or more than 50 employees. In Colorado, employees are protected under the state law for up to two years, while the federal law only protects uh, families for a year. It is important to note that laws vary by state. Often the state um, has stricter laws than the federal laws, and that stricter laws, which oftentimes means that it's the state law, can override the federal law. So in Colorado, employers have to follow the breastfeeding Colorado state law versus the federal law. For more information about your state laws, please visit the Office on Women's Health. Now I'm going to turn it over to Caitlin, who is going to talk about how to accommodate. Great, thank you so much, Christy Marie. Uh, so now that we've gone over some of the benefits and the importance of supporting breastfeeding employees, we're gonna dive into some more details about how you can make accommodations in your own workplace. We'll go 
go through some simple strategies and steps to consider as you think about implementing a lactation program or adding to an existing one that might already be there. To provide some background to this conversation, what exactly are we talking about when it comes to parents balancing the needs of their child and returning to work? What does this really look like? So it's often portrayed as that image on the left, uh, that you'll have an office, plenty of privacy, supportive coworkers and supervisors, and that you'll just have a great time pumping. Uh, but as you can imagine, this is very often not the case. Unfortunately, it often looks like images on the right, uh, scrambling to find whatever space might be available to pump, uh, might end up being an IT room or a storage closet. More often than not, it ends up being a bathroom, despite the legal protections that Christy Marie outlined. Um, and just looking to try to stay out of everyone's way, maybe having uncomfortable conversations with other employees and supervisors. So how can we change this story? How can we make it easier for families to juggle the intense demands of being a new parent and the nutritional needs of their child, while also continuing to contribute their talents in the workplace? One piece of this very complex puzzle is creating a work environment that is supportive of breastfeeding. And there are three major components to this that have been found to be effective. The first is space, the second is time, and the third is policy. So next I'll go into some detail on each of these components and how you might be able to apply them in your specific workplace uh, through making some fairly simple changes. There are very creative ways in which employers have approached this to not only ensure that they are in compliance with the law, but to also be sure the space that they are offering is actually functional for parents to use. Um, and here you can see we have a list of some features that you may want to consider when it comes to creating or changing an existing lactation space. The first three items listed are required by law, as Christy Marie mentioned, and the remaining items are gonna help make the space more functional, comfortable, and efficient for your employees. The first step, if it hasn't been done already, is to identify and designate a specific room or space. And the space really does not have to be large. Uh, it could be as small as four by five feet. Um, essentially, you want to be able to accommodate to have a comfortable chair and also a table directly next to it uh, for a breast pump to rest on. Having an electrical outlet uh, is also key um, so that the pump can be plugged in and used. You also want to make sure that the space is free from intrusion. It does need to be private. So ideally, the space would have a lock on it, uh, but if this is not possible, clear signage can work in place to ensure that privacy. You also want to make sure that the space you have, have identified is accessible, so meaning that it's pretty close to where your employees are working. This minimizes uh, extra time needed to travel to and from the space. And of course, we want to make sure that this room is not a bathroom. Some other features you may want to consider would be having some refrigerator space, either in the lactation space or nearby, since breast milk does need to be kept cold. And breast milk is considered a food, so it can be stored alongside other food items in a standard refrigerator. No special equipment is required for this. Having a sink in close proximity is also great uh, so that pump parts could be cleaned after a session. And having a multi-user hospital grade pump available is really great to add to any lactation space. Uh, these tend to be a little bit more efficient than some of the uh, ones that you transport and could potentially lessen the amount of time that an employee needs for pumping. You also want to think about making the room comfortable for employees. So maybe adding a lamp or um, having some music or art on the walls. Uh, relaxation is a key part of milk expression and can help the process um, be a little smoother and a little bit quicker as well. And then when you're thinking about the physical environment in your workplace, so not just the lactation space, but also uh, areas where staff are working and public facing spaces, uh, you may want to consider having some breastfeeding friendly messaging or graphics on display. This type of messaging can really help indicate that you welcome breastfeeding anywhere in your facility. And then you can also add an extra sign that says you do have a lactation space available for those parents looking for a little bit more privacy. This type of signage really helps communicate your support of families and our communities, and it works towards creating a culture where breastfeeding is really welcomed. 
And in the state of Colorado, breastfeeding parents are protected by a law, an additional law, in addition to the workplace laws, that says a breastfeeding parent has the right to breastfeed anywhere they have the right to be. Uh, so keeping this in mind um, when you're thinking about your physical environment. Also to note, uh, some employers have actually designed their lactation spaces to be multi-purpose. Uh, so it's, it's not being used for breastfeeding. It could potentially be used for other purposes by employees, such as wellness or relaxation. Um, and this is absolutely fine, as long as the room is prioritized for breastfeeding purposes when it is needed. And the last bullet here has some resources for best practices. It's the American Institute of Architects. They've compiled a set of recommendations for designing a lactation space, and they have some really great ideas on there, so we encourage you to visit their site. So as I mentioned, there's some really creative solutions that employers have used uh, to accommodate breastfeeding employees. And the Office on Women's Health has tons of great examples on their website, which is at the bottom, on how to find space in any setting. They have different tabs for different types of work sectors. Uh, so workplaces really do vary so greatly um, when it comes to space. And so you can see on the left here, uh, these are dedicated lactation rooms, so a little bit more traditional in that it's a physical room um, with a door. Um, and while this is a great way to accommodate employees, it's not absolutely required. It's great if it's possible, but you do not have to have a separate room. Uh, lactation spaces can be temporary, they can be flexible. Um, as you can see in the middle here, uh, room dividers, cubicle walls, partitions, curtains have all been used to create a private area for breastfeeding in more challenging spaces. Uh, you could also think about converting in a storage area or closet, such as Metro Carrington in Denver. Um, perhaps a conference room that's not used very often. A dressing room in a retail facility could be a potential space for lactation. Uh, you could even find an area that you could add tracks to the ceiling and add a privacy curtain. We've even had school districts in our area who have converted old phone booths that used to have pay phones in them. They've converted all of those um, across their district into lactation spaces so that they have a room in each building um, for breastfeeding parents. And on the far right, you can see how spaces have even be, been created in outdoor settings. Right there is a pop-up tent um, on a farm. And on the top is a manager's office, uh, which might be a great option if the employee doesn't have their own office, utilizing a coworker or manager's space, um, working out an arrangement especially if schedules are alternating, uh, might be a possibility. And lastly, depending on your location, you could also consider working with other uh, small businesses in the area, so maybe at a shopping center or a mall setting, um, and creating a centralized shared location space that could be used by all of those businesses. Okay, so next is signage. And we really cannot emphasize enough how important clear signage is. Uh, having your lactation space clearly identified and marked uh, with a sign uh, is really important and it helps avoid parents needing to ask multiple people where the room is located. Signage is also key for ensuring privacy. As you can see in the bottom right corner, uh, using a really clearly marked some type of do not disturb sign uh, can help keep the room private, especially if there's not a door on the lock, a uh, lock on the door. And signage can also be used to indicate your support for breastfeeding families, as we mentioned earlier. So in the upper left corner, you can see this business has a window cling in their window. And in the middle, there's a breastfeeding is welcome here sign. Um, so all of those just let families know, uh, as well as your staff, know that breastfeeding is welcomed and encouraged in your space. So depending on the size of your organization, you may need to think about how many lactation rooms would be appropriate. Some things to consider are is the type of workspace that you're working with, uh, the physical size of your company and how many buildings, so if it's more of a campus setup, something to consider, the number of women and childbearing age, and then typical work schedules. So thinking about how many staff you have on site at any given time, depending on different shifts and schedules. Um, and then also thinking about times when most women tend to pump. So thinking about maybe the lunch hour might be a really busy time. So you may need to be able to provide uh, multiple spaces um, during busier times such as that. 
So here we have a short video from the Office on Women's Health, and it shows how a few different businesses have accommodated their breastfeeding employees. When nursing mothers return to work from maternity leave, they need an area that is not a bathroom to express milk during their work period. A small area may be sufficient as long as it is private and free from intrusion from co-workers and the public. Businesses in all industry sectors have found creative solutions for space, including permanent dedicated lactation rooms, flexible spaces shared for other purposes, and outdoor and mobile options. The people around you have to know what you're going through when you're breastfeeding. You know, they need to know um, you, you need time, you need private space. It's actually very difficult to balance working and pumping. So with a convenient facility, this clean and fast, we can get in and out and get back to work and not be stressed about trying to do all the things that we'd like to do. The Lactation Center at the Library of Congress is a very nice facility. There are um, four small private rooms with comfortable chairs and a table and an outlet, which is really what you need. You want a private, clean space. There are sinks right outside the door, which we can all share that have hot water, which you know, we really want our supplies to be clean, so it makes it so much easier and fast because we don't want to spend a lot of time pumping. We did not have any designated space before we built this building, and so it was a very conscious decision to have um, a space for our moms. And for a couple of reasons, it was for both our employees and for our summit participants and those who come in and do presentations and things like this peer group. And we really focused on wanting to make it easy for moms to be able to come back to work. It felt like group publishing really cared about me as an employee. I know there are other employees or other places that um, don't have these facilities, and so women are left to either give up the uh, thought of providing their children with breast milk, or you know there is a pump breast milk in their car or in the bathroom, which feels like it's not supportive at all. We had an associate bring us the opportunity and talk to us and said there was an opportunity where we didn't have a spot. And what was happening is we had customers and associates a lot that would go to the restroom and utilize the restroom for this uh, procedure. And instead of what we decided was it would be good to take our fitting room that we used, uh, weren't really using, and modify that a little bit and give them the opportunity to have a private place to go and um, nurse their, their child. I feel very comfortable coming to Walmart. I have a five-month-old, and to know that there is a breastfeeding room available if needed, I feel comfortable going and providing for my child. It's gotten out in the community that Walmart does have a facility that or does have a room for uh, breast pump, breastfeeding, and uh, I believe it's, it's been a great benefit. We Okay, great. I hope that provided a little bit of a picture of some creative solutions to creating lactation spaces. So now that we've addressed the space considerations, we're going to discuss how to accommodate time and flexibility in the workplace. So first one, background. Uh, for parents to keep their milk production high, parents do need to feed their baby directly or use the breast pump to express milk about every two to three hours. And pumping sessions typically take around 20 minutes. And that's not including any time to and from traveling to the space. Uh, it's important to note that needs do vary over time depending on the baby's age, uh, their growth, uh, when they're starting solid foods and things like that. Um, so every two to three hours for about 20 minutes is an average, but it certainly doesn't apply to uh, every situation. And time can be addressed in the workplace through a few different tactics. Um, having that time to express breast milk during the workday is required by law, and there really should be few to no barriers when it comes to arranging these break times and work patterns to accommodate. Uh, oftentimes, time to pump can be integrated with existing break times, um, and it can be paid or unpaid, as Christy Marie mentioned. Another approach to this is to actually facilitate the parent being able to feed their baby directly during the workday through using some different family-friendly practices. 
uh, such as an infant's at work policy, on site childcare, telecommuting, flexible scheduling. And we'll discuss these in a little bit more detail later in the presentation. So here we have another short video that describes how a fast food chain in California implemented rotating schedules among other breastfeeding friendly strategies to accommodate multiple breastfeeding mothers in their workplace at the same time. Carl's Jr. Your show that it's not hard to support nursing employees, even in small crowd space and in the hectic pace of a fast food restaurant. The company offers a small storage area and rotating schedule so nursing women can easily express milk at work. The management and the employee's team approach respects and values those for employees. I have helped some of my employees by returning back to work from maternity leave and leave of absence by allowing them to um, pump breast milk. My goal is for one year um, to just be a senior or something that came to me and asked me questions of how they would go about doing so pumping at work. And I just tried to provide them a designated area where they feel safe and secure to be able to express their milk. She's very supportive. She actually excited I am um, breastfeeding. And as a employer, I feel that it benefits the company or the employer to allow the mothers to pump breast milk because it uses less time and money um, having to hire and train new employees because you couldn't accommodate um, your existing employees to be able to support them in a positive manner. Um, I think it also helps with allowing employees to pump breast milk because it sets a positive morale in the restaurant and then you have happy, quality, productive employees working for you. It's definitely great to ask if we can pump at work, during work, break time. There's a lot of people in the class, so there's enough time where I can sit down and we have to take our break. I'm going to make people very proud because I'm contributing to their wide success, not only as them as my employee, but as uh, their children, which is our future. And then it makes me proud too to know that they can feel comfortable coming to me and talking to me like that, that we can communicate and work together because they're also to be a team. If I wasn't able to come to work, I would volunteer to quit. I wouldn't want to, so that's my job. I think uh, the fast food industry being very fast food, for limited space areas, um, having four breastfeeding mothers at one time being able to pump breast milk, that if we can do it as a company in fast food, that any company in any industry could be able to do it the same. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, there are some family-friendly practices that can make it easier for employees to breastfeed for longer. Um, so having that opportunity to actually directly breastfeed a baby during the workday rather than pump uh, may be preferred by some parents. Uh, this is due to a number of reasons. Um, being able to feed directly allows for bonding and it eliminates the need for all the logistics associated with pumping. So cleaning the parts, uh, bringing the parts to work with you, uh, making sure that the milk is being stored properly so that it's safe. Um, and this can be done um, by employers uh, through a few different methods. So on-site childcare, if that's possible, is a great way for employees to be able to breastfeed directly. Uh, flexible scheduling, so if a parent is looking to maybe use their lunch hour to uh, you know, run down the street to the childcare center and feed their baby, that might be an option, just being flexible with schedules. Um, and then infinite work policies. So of course, this is not possible in every work setting. Um, there are quite a few workplaces who have begun implementing such policies, even across the Denver metro area, uh, including my own employer, Tri-County Health Department, does have an infinite work policy. Um, and testimonial from these employers and employees have found the programs to be incredibly beneficial and also find them to be a great recruitment and retention tool. Uh, the link here um, underneath the policy will bring you to a sample policy from Boulder County. And paid family leave. So research has found that paid parental leave after the birth of a child 
um, plays a huge role in establishing su successful breastfeeding. And it often leads to longer duration of breastfeeding, which as we discussed, allows um, moms and babies to receive all the wonderful health benefits associated with breastfeeding. Now that we've covered the physical, environmental, and time-related aspects of being a breastfeeding-friendly workplace, we're going to discuss the internal policies and guidelines that can support breastfeeding employees. The sample policy on this slide is from the Office on Women's Health, and we will provide a copy of this document, the recording of this presentation, uh, so that you can use it uh, perhaps as a guide for creating a policy in your own workplace. So lactation policy is a written set of guidelines that outline your organization's support for breastfeeding employees. I could touch on different topics, uh, including flexible scheduling, communication, break times, uh, the space that you're providing, um, maybe protocols and procedures associated with those rooms. And the overall purpose is just to ensure that breastfeeding is the normal part of daily life for nursing mothers and that they do have the support that they need. It's key to make sure that this policy is um, understood by employees across your organization. Uh, so having a plan to distribute the, plan, the policy at least once a year is a good idea, and also including this into new hire and manager training, just to make sure that uh, it is understood that the policy exists. And then when you do have an employee who's going to be taking maternity leave, you'll want to initiate that conversation with the employee before they leave. Um, and just make sure that they're aware of the policy and all of the support you offer as an employer. And some employers have gone, um, gone about this by creating a packet that they give to parents before they go on maternity leave. And this might include a copy of the policy itself, uh, perhaps a map of lactation spaces if there are multiple throughout the facility. Um, if applicable, you know, some instructions on accessing the spaces, uh, some workplaces use online calendars to re reserve space in the room, and some rooms might require key access. Uh, you also can include some breastfeeding resources in such a package. Uh, you do want to keep in mind as you're having these conversations to definitely respect uh, the privacy of your employees. Uh, some parents are physically unable or choose not to breastfeed for a variety of reasons. Um, so just thinking of supporting these families' needs uh, during this time, regardless of how they plan to feed their infant, um, is important. And um, some other ideas of how to further support your employees is perhaps contracting with a lactation consultant, um, and also checking in with your uh, health insurance, if you're providing health insurance as an employer, um, to make sure that lactation services and equipment are definitely covered with the Affordable Care Act. Most plans do include this, um, but it's always a good idea to double check. Um, and then if your employees are participating in other types of health insurance, uh, such as Medicaid or through the marketplace, uh, you can also provide some education on um, different benefits that might be available to them. Okay, so now that we've covered the main three components of being a breastfeeding-friendly workplace, the space, time, and policy, you may be wondering where to start. And a really great first step in beginning this process is just assessing your organization's current support for families, um, since you're probably already doing several um, activities that are supporting these families. And then identifying just areas of opportunity of where some small changes can be made to better support them. And there's several assessments available. Um, working through Health Links, they can definitely get you connected um, with their family-friendly uh, assessment. Um, local public health agencies often have assessments. Uh, Christy Marie and I can certainly put you um, in touch with some different types of assessments to use to go through this process. Um, and we can also work to even connect you with other employers who have implemented lactation accommodations. Um, so please feel free to reach out. Our emails will be at the end of the presentation. Thank you, Caitlin. So now I'm just going to go, um, I'm going to walk through um, a couple of places that you can reach out to um, to actually support with accommodation. And so um, we have um, a couple of places here that you can reach out to internally to assist with breastfeeding accommodation. And so we have uh, your HR uh, department or your work life de uh, department. A facility can sometimes help with questions about repurposing or locating space to accommodate breastfeeding, um, employee relations, 
or under your employee assistance program. And so uh, just like there are resources internally, uh, these are a couple of resources externally that you can reach out to to uh, support with accommodating breastfeeding. So uh, your local public health agencies, as um, me and Caitlin um, are an example of how to reach out to a local public health agency that may have breastfeeding resources and technical assistance or possibly even funding. Um, local coalitions, specifically local breastfeeding coalitions like La Leche um, League, or most states have a local breastfeeding coalition available that you could potentially reach out to. Uh, there might be community organizations that are focusing on breastfeeding that you can reach out to. The Women, Infant, and Children, or WIC program is also a great place to go uh, to provide breastfeeding resources and often have certified lactation, lactation counselors that can point people in the right direction. The Office on Women's Health is also a great resource for training, toolkits, and additional information on breastfeeding laws. So here we just have uh, the pa uh, page for on the women on the Office of, on Women's Health uh, and the business case for breastfeeding, and um, this kind of just provides easy steps to support breastfeeding employees. Um, there are templates that can be personalized and fit to your agency's specific needs. Um, there are assessments, um, and as Caitlin had mentioned, uh, also to reach out to us because we also have some great resources. Um, and you can identify strengths and areas for improvement, um, timelines, sample policies, promotional materials, and lots more. Um, honestly, um, I can spend all day on this website. Um, they have some really amazing resources. Yeah. So um, just um, as we mentioned that there are internal and external uh, resources, there are also Colorado-specific resources that, can, that we can provide. So Caitlin mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, Advancing Breastfeeding on Colorado, also known as the ABC, aims to provide uh, breastfeeding continuity for care and can support with providing technical assistance. Um, toolkits and for some areas, small funding stipends to support with accommodating breastfeeding. Um, ABC can also point employers, um, can point people to emp uh, local employers um, and resources throughout the state in Denver. Um, and as Caitlin mentioned, that we can also um, suggest um, employers that we are working with that have already worked towards uh, accommodating breastfeeding at their agencies. Um, please feel free to contact ABC for more information. And um, we have our, the link up underneath the uh, logo here. And as part of our follow-up uh, resources, we will be sitting out um, along the ABC one pager, which also has contact information for each local public health breastfeeding coordinator that is working on the ABC project. So I would like to close with five simple steps to compliance. So first, it's all about starting the conversation, just like Caitlin mentioned, within your organization about what the current breastfeeding policies and practices are. Reaching out to those external and internal resources, um, like the local public health agencies, to understand what resources and support is available. If your agency does, does currently have a breastfeeding policy um, and practices, take the time to review, revise um, current practices to really ensure that it's comprehensive for what your agency needs and what your employees need. If you don't have policy guidelines, I'm thinking about creating one. Once again, the Office on Women's Health has some great examples and templates on their website. Working to also identify spaces within your, within your agency that can be repurposed to accommodate breastfeeding. And remember that there are creative ways to repurpose space. And continue to promote and improve lactation support and services. Sometimes reaching out to your own employees and asking what kind of breastfeeding support and accommodations they would like to see in your agency can help provide insight on how to support and accommodate breastfeeding at your agency. So we um, will take a couple of minutes for questions. These are our resources. And we have also included some of the resources mentioned throughout this presentation. And once again, if you are located in the state of Colorado, please feel free to reach out to your local ABC coordinator for resources and support. And thank you all for your time today. I'm virtually clapping. We do have a couple of questions, uh, Christy Marie and Caitlin. One 
One question was, um, could you speak a little to how Colorado breastfeeding accommodation law is enforced? If you have any insight into that? So we don't have specifics on um, the regulatory side of how those go about being enforced. Um, the Colorado Breastfeeding Coalition does provide support to mothers who are experiencing challenges with those laws. Uh, so visiting their website, and that's the Colorado Breastfeeding Coalition, they would be a really great resource um, to discuss, um, have some more information on the legal implications of that and how to best navigate it. Okay, awesome. And however, I just wanted to note that obviously if a mom does bring forth, um, you know, that she would uh, like some assistance that um, that is another way that it can be regulated within your agency because it is a lot if, if a mom does bring it forth. Thanks. Um, and another question was um, from someone who has 16 locations and 91 employees is the idea of a traveling pump, would that be worthwhile to make available? Um, having any pump available is wonderful. So um, even if that pump does have to change locations, I think as long as employees are aware of it um, and aware of where it will be at what time, um, it would be helpful um, just to avoid those moms having to carry along their own equipment. So I think as long as there's good communication about it, I could see that definitely working. Thanks. And um, there was a comment from somebody who, who has a, a corporate breastfeeding support company who helps businesses to set up and maintain some corporate lactation support programs. Um, I will make sure she has your contact info. Um, she was sort of, yes, interested in being added to list of Colorado resources for, for people needing help and advice. Uh, on pumping and renting equipment. Sounds great. And just a reminder to everybody, we will share all these slides and a recording, and we'll also, um, all of our webinar, um, HealthLinks webinars end up going on our YouTube channel. So feel free to share it with those you might, uh, you think might benefit, um, and feel free to share the slides. And I'm sure Christy Marie and Caitlin would be happy to, to answer any questions that you might have, just contact them directly. Um, and if, we have any other questions? We have a couple more minutes. Um, any final thoughts from our panelists? No, I think just as you said, feel free to reach out to us um, through that ABC program um, or through our emails here directly. Um, and we are happy to provide um, any guidance or support that we can. So we have some great um, funding opportunities here in Colorado uh, that we're pretty excited about. So please feel free to reach out. Awesome. And um, in our last couple of minutes, I wanted just to uh, announce to everyone that HealthLinks has a few upcoming events that we are, are sponsoring or working on. And there's a American Heart Association event happening on February 14th. And we do also, our Center for Health, Work, and Environment has a live training um, for cannabis cultivators and uh, uh, personal protective equipment. We do a wide variety of trainings. And our next HealthLinks webinar will be March 13th um, from 12 to 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on integrating well-being and work. And um, you'll have access to uh, our full list of calendar events and um, a link here if you want to sign up for our listserv to stay connected or get more information about our programs. And it looks like we might have one more question. Oh, just a thank you. We've had lots of appreciating, uh, appreciation comments and thanks for being able to share these. So I know our attendees today um, plan to spread the message far and wide. Well, thank you. Great. Thanks so much for having us. Awesome. And thank you everyone for joining us today. And we hope to see you at our next webinar. And stay tuned for that uh, follow-up email to go out this afternoon with all the resources. Have a good, have a good Wednesday.